Hello and welcome to Not Every Single. I'm Joe. And I'm Stephanie. We're going to talk about the Foo Fighters today. Cool. For the first time. Now, we've been talking a lot of pop on this channel. I'm excited to talk about a little rock. Yeah, the pop stuff just sort of happens. There's a lot of good things coming out lately. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, we're looking for a new rock track to talk about. And, and here we have it. We got a new Foo Fighters song from upcoming album, But Here We Are, out June 2nd. And this track is called Rescued. Obviously, they're coming back from a, a major, major loss, and uh, and it's cool to have them back so, I guess I was going to say so soon, but it's, you know, it's been like a year. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are kind of saying like, oh, it's so fast, but I mean, it really depends. Everybody's different. Every band is different. Everybody deals with loss and grief differently, and I think they found a lot of solace in music and creativity. It's you know, it's almost like music is healing. <laughs> it's almost like you can, you know, use it. <laughs> and work through some stuff, yeah, you know? Yeah. I think it's great that they are still creating and still out there doing their thing. Um, I want to talk about the drums first because, you know, obviously that's a, a big question. They didn't really say who was drumming. I feel like I hear Dave drumming on this track. Yeah, you said there was like a fill in particular. Yeah, towards the end of the song, got a little a little bridge without drums. And when they come back in, there's this like chung kung chung kung and like <laughs> it's like kind of signature like clunky in a good way Dave yeah. that I hear in like Nirvana. Yeah. So I'm I'm fairly certain it's him, but you know, there's always a chance that maybe this is Taylor. Uh, From you know, a, a, a track they were already working on previously, maybe. Yeah, yeah they might have had a, a drum track for it and, mm -hmm. you know, kind of built this around it, mm -hmm. which would also be cool. And I wouldn't be surprised if maybe there's some some Taylor on this album. So, um, you know, on the drum front, yeah. that, that's my theory. Okay. But as far as the rest of the song, I had a pretty positive response. Yeah, it's been a while since I've cared a, very much about Foo Fighters. I know they have a big following. Dave mm -hmm. is a cool guy. The band does great fun stuff. They have, we've talked a little bit, um, before this episode about like, they're kind of the epitome of dad rock yeah. and like that can be used in a good way or a pejorative way. But like in this case, it's like, yeah, they, it works for a lot of people and it's great. You know, that term gets thrown around a lot and it doesn't always have to be negative, mm -hmm. you know, a uh, dad rock you know, maybe it started as a negative term, but I think it's been around long enough where it can really mean different things. And mm -hmm. I think for this band, it means they have a close connection to to a certain fan base that's yeah. that's, you know, at a certain age, has gone through life with them. Mm -hmm. And so to be kind of like the masters of dad rock, mm -hmm. the first band that comes to mind if you think of dad <laughs> rock. I think that's nice. Yeah. So maybe, you know, they weren't being ex as experimental as maybe they were in the beginning, but they really honed what they were doing. It was, hasn't really been my thing, but again, like I know that they have a lot going on for them and I know there's a lot of people who love it. So great for them. But in this song, I feel a little bit more interested in what they're doing. Yeah. Right away. I hear this like big fuzz guitar. And that was a really welcome thing. Mm -hmm. You know, fuzz guitar is one of my favorite things. It means a lot to me, the fuzz guitar. <laughs> and when it's used well, it's, it's, you know, it really hits. And I think here, right when it comes in with that, like, I'm, I love how it's produced. It's got yeah. the low end to it. I don't know if it's like big muff pedals or what. But, like, it was nice to hear that, uh, that bite, that edge. Yeah, do we know who produced this? Yeah, it's, um, I'm blanking on his name, but he, he has worked with them okay. before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The production, um, I think is really heavy, but, um, but not muddy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Everything has its space while still being like a wall of sound mm -hmm. and you get that signature, like earnestness from from their music that I've, I've sort of always felt like going, going back to the beginning with monkey wrench, you know, there's like, especially in their big triumphant choruses, you often hear like 
I don't know, this earnestness that cuts through everything. Yeah. And and it's still there after all these years, yeah. and that's awesome. I think for me, what really stood out, and you know, I don't know their discography well enough to know if this is a new thing necessarily, but something I haven't heard very much in singles is the rasp, the grit, yeah, the like absolute, um, just, I mean, Dave is really like going for it with this vocal take and he's not phoning any second of it in a, th- a throat tearing vocal yeah. take if I've ever heard one. <laughs> yeah. That stood out to me too. I yeah. thought that was really cool and really indicative of what they're bringing with this, this new release. It feels like, mm-hmm. like there's some, there's some passion behind it and some, some balls to it and like why wouldn't there be right yeah you know? yeah obviously you know getting things out through your voice is can be super th- therapeutic and you know look, looking into the lyrics of the song you know it's it's vague enough it's there's not really saying anything too specific there could be a lot of interpretations but clearly there are hints of like processing of grief in this and they're not shying away fully from from like, hey, we've been through this, like we want to talk to you about it. And I think it'll be helpful for a lot of fans who had such a strong connection to Taylor too. It's always, and it's always, you know, it's worth mentioning that it's always nice to have like a tough rocker guy Mm -hmm. being so vulnerable and talking about grief. Like, I think that's really important too. Yeah. Well, I want to, and you know, Dave's really not like the tough rocker guy anyway yeah i, I guess he is kind of a teddy bear just just sweetheart like genial fun like all his documentaries and stuff that he does he just seems like he likes to have fun and and do stuff you know but, but uh, i guess a, yeah. a major rock figure right yeah and it's not something that's new you know go back mm-hmm. to my hero um which is a foo Fighters song that's yeah. addressing unfortunately the same type of scenario yeah. this band has been through a lot yeah and um I think it's really cool that they're continuing. I really don't see another option. They've Mm -hmm. been through so much and they always have continued. Why would this stop them? Yeah. You know, just, just keep going and pushing it forward. And now we have this new great track that so many people are happy about. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, you know, there's like a press release, some info about this album. They're kind of trying to go back to their earlier sound a little bit more raw. Um, and, 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 you know, I just, I love when a band does that, they kind of grow and, and go through these different phases and like mature. And then maybe they kind of like settle into a groove and it's something like, obviously I don't prefer to have someone, <laughs> right. a loss like this happen, but you know, this, this shook up what they were doing and mm-hmm. made them reevaluate clearly. Yeah. Um, and like reach a little deeper down. And so, um, I think that's, yeah, it's, it's something I like to see as a way of working through a tragedy. Me too. I totally agree. You get it in the hard hitting drums, whoever's doing it, you get it in that fuzz guitar, you get it in his voice, especially. Mm -hmm. And what you're left with is, is just like, it feels like it's all laid out, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a heart on the sleeve. Mm -hmm. Everything is kind of out there. And it's not like trite, you know, he's not just like using the same, uh, the same lyrics you've heard a million times. He's like, this is how I'm feeling. This is like a personal expression that's specific to me, which I think is something almost easier to grasp onto than generic words. Cause it creates these sort of like images for you and things that you can sort of make your own as well. Yeah. It's really cool to hear, you know, I, how old are they? Like they're getting up there in age and, and to have them still bring that oomph is cool. I can totally hear sort of that vibe of like a monkey wrench, uh, learn to fly. Like, Mm -hmm. like I can hear that in this new track. Uh, Obviously it's a more, matured version with a lot of life experience behind Mm -hmm. it but when they say we're tapping into our like 1995 roots Mm -hmm. like that's they're not just saying that I can just I read that I hear the song yes you are I can absolutely hear it yeah it it comes through yeah and I love when when bands can do that because um especially with an act that's been around so long um oftentimes that can get thrown around as sort of a Mm mm-hmm sort of a false advertising type thing yeah, to hook like they're listeners going back, back to their in. roots yeah. yeah they're telling me it's the best thing since Siamese dream <laughs> every record yeah right 
uh, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's nice to yeah. like money where your mouth is kind of thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, I can totally hear it. You are tapping back into that and bringing the life experience to it. The gravitas. So here's what I want to know. Neither one of us are really super familiar with their discography. They've just, they've been around pretty much my whole life. I've heard the singles. I've, you know, been fond of Dave as just like a public figure and, and, you know, Pat and all those guys, uh, is there like a particular record we should check out? Do mm-hmm. you go chronologically, go all the way back to color and shape or whatever? Or is there like a standout record in the middle? Mm-hmm. Do we wait for this one to come is out? Is there like June? a fan favorite that didn't do, you know, was right. it commercially known? I don't know. I remember liking that song All My Life. I remember mm-hmm. liking um, DOA was kind of uh, not their biggest hit, but mm-hmm. I remember like really liking that song. Okay. So there's there's been bits and pieces that I've heard and enjoyed. Where do we jump in and tackle a full record? Let us know. And thanks for watching. This is not every single. I'm jo- <laughs> I almost <laughs> forgot that's where I say my name. Yeah. I'm Joe. <laughs> and I'm Stephanie. Thanks for watching. Bye.